Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about how to sing low notes. Now I know that might seem like a funny video to make as a soprano, <laughs> but it's very important for a soprano to know how to hit low notes because there's a lot of repertoire that demands that of us. Take for example Christine in Phantom of the Opera. Yes, she has to hit that high E, but also throughout the show she's got to hit the A and the G below middle C. So you've got to know when your voice is warmed up how to hit those notes. So for this video, I'm going to be first talking about how to record low notes, so when we're in the studio, and that is different for me for when I'm singing live. So for example, when I want to go into a studio and record low notes, I go in in the morning, before my voice has had a chance to warm up as I've been chatting all day, and also, I don't fully warm up my voice. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of singing teachers out there that are going to be screaming at me now, going, what? <laughs> But let me explain this. So when I warm up my voice, I've got my range here, and when I warm up, it shifts. It shifts across. So I gain my top register and slightly lose the bottom register. So over the years, I've been really focusing on making sure that when I warm up my voice and when I'm practicing, that I make sure I've got tools in my toolkit. I've got techniques that make it so I can still hit that bottom register. Now also for me, with my lower register and my lower range, before I've warmed up, it's got a bit more warmth to it. It's got a bit more of a full-bodied kind of sound. It's a bit more full. And so for recording, I really like that sound on my low notes. And the microphones pick it up beautifully. So when I'm recording low notes, what I like to do is go into the studio in the morning, I don't warm up my voice fully, but I do exercise the muscles. So I make sure I warm up my breathing system, all of my core muscles that I'm gonna be using. I do a bit of humming, but not that much, just to get the voice going and lubricated, but I don't warm it up all the way because I still want that full bodied warmth that my voice has before I fully warmed up on that bottom end. So for recording, that is what I choose to do. But when you're singing live, you don't have that luxury. Because if I could go in and sing live um, and sing all the low notes first and then go off and warm up properly and then go back on, <laughs> then I'd be able to do it that way. But when you're doing a live show, that's not possible. So when you're doing a live show and you have warmed up pop properly, hopefully, before going on, you need to have these tools and tricks in your tool belt so that you can reach the lower notes that songs demand of you all the way through your show. So one of the things that I've done to really focus on being able to do that is when I warm up, first of all, I'm going all the way to the top of my range, warming up slowly, slowly, slowly up the top, and then I get to the top and I go all the way back down, 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 as far as I can go, and then back up and then back down, and I make sure that my full range is being exercised. So you can do that with your top end. You can go up a bit more and come back down and then go up a little bit more and come back down. But you can also do that with your low end as well. And so when I'm warming up, I make sure I exercise both extremities of my range. And that's really helped me keep both sides of my range once I'm fully warmed up. But the other things you can do have got a lot to do with the placement of the voice and the placement of the larynx. So if I give you an example of that, I've got quite a high speaking voice being a soprano, and if I wanted to create a lower, more rounded tone, you can always move your larynx down. If you want to have your low notes, you need to move the larynx in the opposite direction. And so a way of getting that placement is if you go to swallow. If you go to swallow but don't, it moves your larynx up and you can feel it in that slightly elevated position. That means that then when you sing low notes, you've got even more of your vocal tract that your larynx can travel down. And that means that you've got extra room down the bottom. So before you sing a low note, if you wanted to go ah, that's quite low for me. <laughs> now let's try that again with the larynx in an elevated position. Ah, 
I'm now able to reach a bit further down because my larynx was in that elevated position. Another thing I was doing, I'm not sure if you noticed, was I was making sure that my jaw was completely relaxed and I was making sure that I had a good amount of space as well as I was singing. Ah, you need to make sure you've got at least two fingers width in your mouth at all times and that your jaw is nice and relaxed. So another thing that you can do in order to help you reach those lower notes is just to relax a little bit more. <laughs> relax a little bit more. And just open your mouth a little bit more. Sometimes what helps as well is just giving a little bit more breath to the note as well and that can give it a really lovely quality. Oh, I can't go down any lower than that. Let's try and move my larynx up. Oh, and I've now reached that far more comfortably. <laughs> so with a combination of slightly more breath, with a combination of also making sure you're nice and relaxed and changing the larynx, the position of the larynx, You've got all these different tools that can help you out. And you can see some of these tools being used when you watch live performances. So for example, if you look at people singing in Les Mis or in Phantom, when they reach the low notes, sometimes you can notice them, just relax the jaw slightly more and drop the jaw a bit more just to give them a bit of extra space. You can often see that. So if you wanna see how somebody is performing the song that you want to sing, if you watch what they're doing, if you watch their jaw and you watch their neck and you watch their body and how they're breathing, that can give you a lot of clues and a lot of insight as to how to sing that song properly. So I really hope this video has been helpful. If you've got any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will get back to you. But in the meantime, remember to press the like button and to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.